Good morning and welcome to Global Evangelistic Center here in Kissimmee, Florida. In your Bibles, the book of John, chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. John, chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. And this morning I will be ministering from one of my books uh, in the trilogy on healing the sin sick soul. Uh, that particular book is Healing in the Temples, and the chapter of that book is The Interconnection of the Bodies. In your Bibles, John chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. John chapter 2, verses 18 to 22. And Sister Omi, get ready to read for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 to 19. If you have it in the complete Jewish Bible, that would be good. If not, whatever you have is great. Amen? Then the Jews retorted, What sign, attesting miracle, can you show us as proof of your authority for doing these things? <laughs> Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews replied, <laughs> it took 46 years to build this temple, <laughs> and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple, which was his body. So when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remember what he had said, and they believed and trusted in and relied on the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The interconnection of the bodies. The temple of the body was what he was speaking about. Amen? Jesus' reference to his body as a temple in John 2 and uh, I think that's in verse 19 may be more insightful than many of us may have imagined. Amen? This loaded statement has two very profound implications. The first one is it is of personal and individual significance to us all in realizing that our bodies have become the temple of his holy and divine residence. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 to... A reading from the complete Jewish version. But the person who is joined to the Lord is one spirit. Run from sexual immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body. Hmm. But a fornicator sins against his own body. Or don't you know that your body is a temple for the Rudash Kadesh, who lives inside you, whom you receive from God? The fact is, you don't belong to yourselves. So if our bodies are a temple for the Ruach HaKadesh, it means that when we go and we join our bodies with other people other than our wives, then we are outside of God's will, and we are developing what they call soul ties. Amen? Yeah. Now, 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 <laughs> if our body is the temple, now, now, now a lot of people are going to have a little objection to what I, I, I'm about to tell you. If we were put in charge of minding being the temple keepers, and we saw someone come and with paint, and splashed paint all over the temple, uh, then <laughs> we would get very excited, very agitated, and, and, and we would rush to defend the sanctity of the temple. <laughs> because we don't want putting, people putting graffiti on the temple wall. But if our body is the temple of God, then... What justification do we have in stamping all sorts of things on God's temple? Yeah. Now, a lot of people ain't going to like that, but that's just the way it is. This is not my opinion. 
Your body is the temple of the Lord. Yes, so we should respect our temple. Yes. We shouldn't be carrying our temple to join it with harlots. And we should not be taking our temple to the tattoo parlor to put all sorts of obscene things on God's temple. You were not your own because you were bought with a price. I don't care if you go and stamp I love Jesus on your body. You are still desecrating God's temple. Call me old fashioned if you like. I choose to stick with the word of God. Amen. Amen? Number two, his universal body of followers and believers. <laughs> we've got the temple of the body. Then we've got his universal body uh, of followers and believers. The, the, the temple of our bodies and of the universal body of Christ, these two things are inextricably interconnected. It, it, it helps to think of, of them as three interconnecting circles. Uh, there's a powerful diagram I wish I could show you. What, what one is the first circle at the bottom? You think of uh, three circles joining. The first circle at the bottom is the 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 the, 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 the our physical bodies, and and these physical bodies we've got to put in discipline. The first thing we got to master before we talk about talk about. Uh, 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 mastering other people is we got to master ourselves. We've got to put ourselves in discipline. That's the word of God. Let the word of God fall where it may. Even me, I've got to put myself in discipline. Every day, every day I've got to say to myself, Man, this body, I've got to carry God's anointing. This body, I've got to carry God's anointing and his message. This body, I've got to, to, to be like a lighthouse to, 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 to carry the gospel because a charge to keep, I have a God to glorify. A never dying soul to save, to fit it for the sky. This body, I've got to put in subjection and submission every day. Do I do that successfully all the time? No. But every day I have to try and do that. Yeah. I'm never going to lie to you. Sometimes I don't eat the things I should eat. <coughs> but every day I continue to try and do better than the day before. See, we as ministers must not exclude ourselves from, from the message and the word. The word is for us too. Pastor has to continuously put himself in submission and subjection because of divine purpose and because of divine calling because w when I follow Christ, you should follow me. I don't look for people to worship me, worship Jesus, but I've got to be a messenger of God. I've got to be a light of God. I've got to be an example for the king because I am an ambassador of the king. So once we, we, we get ourselves in submission, once we get our, our bodies in submission, then we go into the next thing, which is the spirit of man, the spiritual realm. That's the next circle. The spiritual realm is where the, the gifts and the callings of God come upon us because we are walking then uh, uh, away from the flesh and we are walking in the spirit because the body of Christ is a spirit spiritual body yes. but we can't get to effectively being the body of Christ if we can't master our own physical bodies yes. our physical bodies must be under subjection must be under submission must be living in righteousness and holiness yes. and then once we've mastered ourselves we can move into being an effective corporate body and that's where the gifts and the callings and the anointing of God comes upon the body of Christ. The spirit of man, the spirit realm. We've got to go from the physical, carnal Christians, to the spiritual, 
Because we are in the end time saints of God. For the last three days, God had me focused on global issues. But the problem with the blood-bought church of God is it cannot address global issues because it's stuck in the element of the desire for cheerleading. And too often, when it's intercession time, it's like a grocery list, a grocery list of needs. God is tired of you just bringing, God, what well, has what I need you to do? When are we going to mature to the point and to the level to where God says, this is what I need you to do? I need you to step up into maturity. Put on the whole armor of God and get ready to address global issues. But we can't get to that because we're stuck in the cribbery. God is tired of baby Christians that only want to feed on milk. Yes, this is my Bible. <laughs> but I've got to take it beyond just reading it. I've got to take it to the element of applying it and living victoriously so I can move into the element of the spiritual dynamic of God and become the body of Christ that Christ so longs for and desires. You see, we go from the physical to the spiritual to becoming the members of the body of Christ where Christ can use us. Oh, praise God. The interconnection of the body and spirit. The, 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 the Trinitarian composition of the body of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. Papa, get ready to read that for me. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. You see, the, the universal body of Christ, it has a Trinitarian reality. And construction in, in very much the, the, the same way that our natural bodies do. We have physical bodies. And the physical body, representation of the temple of Christ, here on earth, is us. Is church. Yes. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 to 22. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and numbers of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Yes. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together mm. to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. That, that, that's the song, Sister Teresa. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you, God wants his temple multiplied here on earth so that the kingdom can come and his will can be done. Oh, hallelujah. God is looking for Christians that will walk in spiritual maturity and that he can use in these end times to do great exploits. Oh, hallelujah. The, the, the spirit within us is represented in the church by the, the, the seven churches in, in, in Revelation. Chapters 2 and 3 that, that, that reflect the spiritual and the emotional state of the body of Christ. Because we are the, the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We, we, we say it in communion. We are the body of Christ by the one Holy Spirit. We were all baptized into the newness of life. Amen. We are the body of Christ. So, so, so these seven states of the universal church, 
These are, are, are warnings to us, n not, not just on, on a corporate scale, uh, as they address the church corporately, but on an individual scale to ensure that, that we avert the spiritual and emotional states that we are being warned about. Amen? <coughs> the first one, Ephesus. Revelation chapter 2. Mama, get ready to read that for me. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, and, and then stay there because <clears throat> there's a couple more in, in Revelation that I, I want you to read. The, the, the first church, Ephesus, wh wh what was it famous for? Th this was the church that had forsaken its first love. The church that had forsaken its first love, even in the natural Sometimes we got to sing the song, remind me, roll back the curtain of memory now and then. Show me where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember, I'm only human and humans forget. Oh, remind me, remind me, dear Lord. I just this morning, <clears throat> I was watching the news and I saw the oldest couple around they'd been married for 85 years mm. and they had a surprise for them waiting outside both of them over 100 years old and the surprise for them was the car 85 years ago that they went on their first date in hmm. and as old as they were you could see the delight because the 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 the, 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 the curtain of of memory ha ha had been rolled back yeah. Uh, and that they remembered what it was like to, to be in love, yeah. which they never lost, because they, they, they knew the art of communication, yeah. which the lady said, but they had a flashback. Sometimes you got to go back. Sometimes you got to go back when Christ first found you. All the zeal and all the excitement. When, 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 you, when you felt like you could run, 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 run. And when you could dance, 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 dance. And shout and sing. All day and all night. When you didn't look at your watch. Oh, when it came time to serve God. Because you, you lose track of time. Because you're so much in love. Oh, we need to fall in love with God all over again. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sis. Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. To, mm. the, to the angels of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he mm. who holds the seven stars yes. in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil, and you have tested those who say they are apostles, and are not, and have found them liars, and you have perversed, no, persevered, and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. My God. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen, repent, and do the fire first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, mm -hmm. unless you repent. But this you, but this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Stay right there, because I, I got another one for you to read. But the church that had forsaken its first love was Ephesus. It was a passionless church. How can you expect to have a love, someone that you love, and there's no passion in the love? It's the same thing with God. God is looking for believers that will have such a passion for him. Yes. 
we could pick apart theologically different cults and various religious organizations. Some that ring our doorbell religiously on Sunday when they know that if you ain't a church, it means you ain't saved in most cases. We could pick apart different cults and different religions that pray every day at a certain hour. But before we get to that, we need to check ourselves. What have you done for me lately? That's what God wants to ask us. Where is your passion? Yeah. Who have you brought to Christ recently? God is looking for people of passion. Oh, Jesus. The second one was Smyrna. Revelation 2 verses 8 to 11. Get ready to read that. This is the church that would suffer persecution. You see, we got to learn from this because anytime trials and challenges come, too easy we are des desirous of giving up and turning back. But, but, but it makes no difference what evil befall. You got to know that God will take care of you. You can walk through the fire. You can walk through the flood. You can walk through any trial. You can walk through any challenge, any adversity. But you can't let go. Oh, I'm climbing up on the rough side of the mountain. And I'm doing the best to make it in. Don't lose sight of the goal. <laughs> Smyrna physically and emotionally tormented. The church is physically and emotionally tormented. But instead of the church putting on the whole armor of God and getting ready to fight, the church is defeated. Sick and disturbed. Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 to 11. And the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things says the first and the last, mm. who was dead and ca came to life. I know your works, mm. tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, mm. but are a synagogue of Satan. Mm. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison hmm. that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. He who had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. You, you, you see, what the word of God right here is saying is that you know, yes, we always think about adversity, trials, and challenges, uh, and how easy it is. No, we got another one for you. How easy it is to give up in adversity, trials, and challenges. But let me tell you something. There's another group of people. These are the group of people are the ones that get blessed, and when they get blessed, they forget God. They get blessed and they forget God. Yes. You got some people where, 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 when they were broken and, 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 and busted and, and, and didn't even ha 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 have a car to, to drive in. You got some people, they, man, they, you can't every time the church yes. door cracks, they're there, present. You know, remember me, God. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice. And then God hears their cry. And God bless them. And they had no problem before if they were getting a little hundred dollars a week. They had no problem before to 10% for God. And then God said, you've been faithful over little. I'm going to make you rule over much. And God bless them. Some situations God will bless a business or a corporation. That, that in the natural you can't understand why, why the, the, the corporation or business is even afloat. But, but God will come in and he'll bless that corporation. He'll bless that business because he needs his people uh, who are in covenant with him to be blessed. 
And then the, the, the boss realizes, oh my God, this person is invaluable to the company. Uh, and the boss says, hey, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to increase what you got in your hands. And then all of a person, the, the, all of a sudden, the person decides, well, no, it was easy to give $10 because I was only making 100 Now I'm making 1000 <laughs> I tell you what, this is how we're going to work this. I'm going to throw it up in the air, and what comes back <clears throat> is mine. And God will take what he want out right out of the air. They come up with all sorts of foolish reasons why you should not pay your tithes. Malachi says that he will rebuke the devourer. You see, the devourer doesn't care what you have to say. Only thing the devourer is looking for is for legal permission when you step outside of God's purpose, when you step outside of God's cover. The devourer is looking for legal permission to come and steal your seed. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me in your tithes and offerings. That's what keeps the blessing of God and the windows of God open over you. And then all of a sudden, the business stops doing well. And you say, God, but God, why? Why? <laughs> because you stop being faithful. God is a good God. And he has covenant. If you do your part, he will do his part. Amen. Be faithful to God and watch the blessings of God catch you, run you down, and overtake you. Mm -hmm. What did we get to? Did we get to Pergamum? All right. Revelation chapter 2. Verses 12 to 17. Pergamum. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, hmm. These things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. Hmm. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith even in the days <coughs> in which Antipas was my faithful Martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have the, you have there who hold the doctrine of Balaam, hmm. who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, hmm. to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nico Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who hath an ear, let him hear what the, the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So, so, so <clears throat> this is really, you can't walk by eyesight. Because in the natural, this church looked like it had everything together. They had the, 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 the praise team all in the same colors, and, 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 they, they had it all down to a science, three, three fast and a slow, and then the smoke would go out and the pastor would come in, and God bless you all. And how's everybody this morning? Everything seemed just so peachy fine, peachy fine. And they got rich, and they were blessed, and, but uh, <laughs> you can't judge people by sight. Because in this realm, in this world, we got to judge them by their spiritual covenant and relationship with God. These people, they look good. They smell good. They had on all the nice clothes and, and they looked like church. They even had a big Jesus grin when you came in. Jesus. Hallelujah. But 
they were in a backslidden condition. And they needed to repent. But they were so full of pride and so full, full of, of, of tradition and religious culture that they forgot that, that, that God is not as much interested with your tradition. He's not as much interested in your religious culture. He do doesn't care what color the stained glass windows are. He, he, he's not as particularly concerned with what color the, the choirs wear. We have one for, for autumn, an outfit for autumn, and uh, an outfit for fall. No, no, God is not interested in all those trappings. Those are nice, mm, you know, in the right place, in the right time. God is interested in covenant. God is interested in relationship. God is interested in you getting back to where you started out from. So he can move you without trickery. And he can move you by the power of the Holy Spirit. The church at Pergamum needed to repent because they were in a backslidden condition. The fourth church, Thyatira. Thyatira. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 to 29. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, mm. love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, mm. who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children and death, and all the church with death, and all the churches which shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts, and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you I say, the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have those doctrine who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keep my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed into pieces like the potter's vessels. Also, I, I also have received from my father, and I will give him the morning star. He who had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. <clears throat> now this one is a very dangerous, thank you mom. This one is a very dangerous one. Because what does it have? A false prophet. Prophet is to be exact. A false prophet who was Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel. And a false prophet prophesies for reasons other than God's purpose. A false prophet can prophesy to accomplish objectives that are outside of God's will. And when you have a church and a body that is so desperate for signs and wonders, what happens is they prophesy and they lead many people astray. They are demonically possessed lying spirits that inhabit these people. They can't tell the truth. They wouldn't know the truth if the truth hit them in the face. When you have leadership 
that justify sexual immorality. When you have leadership that calls abusing little girls right, it's wrong in God's sight. And if the prophets of God do not stand up and rebuke wrong, rebuke pedophilia, then God is angry. I don't care who you are. When you call wrong right, you are demonically led by a lying spirit and God is not pleased with you because you are leading many people astray. God is upset because the church is filled with false prophets. Right is right and wrong is wrong. It's not for us to twist the word of God to justify our political even agendas. Right is right and God is a God of righteousness. The word declares that righteousness and truth are the foundation of God's throne. Five, six, and seven. The church of Sardis. This church had fallen asleep. You can find it in Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. I'm mindful of the, of the time. This church had become lazy, lackadaisical, and apathetic. The kind of church where they see things going wrong, but you know, I'm, I'm just not going to say anything because a lot of people will get uncomfortable. So the church had become lazy. But God says, either you're hot or you're cold. You can't be lukewarm. Because God declares that he will puke you out of his mouth if you are lukewarm. Where is your voice, prophets of God? Where is your voice to speak out and rebuke sin and call wrong, wrong, and to encourage right and call right, right? God is not looking for puke leaders. God is looking for leaders that will be on fire for him and that are not afraid to stand up, that are not afraid to, 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 to speak to authorities under the anointing of God and call wrong, wrong, and right, right. The lazy, lackadaisical, apathetic church. Sardis. Then the church of Philadelphia. Revelation chapter 3, verses 7 to 13. This is the, the church that endured patiently. But the antithesis of patience and endurance is impatience. See, see, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. It makes no difference if evil looks like it's winning, joy cometh in the morning. I don't care what weeping we may have to endure. I don't care how dark it looks. Joy cometh in the morning. Fret not thyself of evil doers. For in due season they shall be cut off. So even if it's a busload of people going what seems to be a comfortable and luxurious way, but you know that way is wrong, stand still and wait to see the salvation of the Lord. And the final seventh church is in Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 22. The church of Laodicea. The church with lukewarm faith. Uncommitted. You see, either you are part of the problem or you are part of the solution. And God wants his people to be on fire so that they can stand up in these times and say, Thus saith the Lord, 
and call right, right, and wrong, wrong. Amen? Amen. The greatest reflection of the soul of man is the power and excess of his mind, which reflects his will, his emotions, and his intellect in the universal body of Christ. We have to have his mind available to us. 1 Corinthians 2 and 16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. My God. I'm going to end right there this morning. Father, give us the mind of Christ. So that we can be your church, God. God, so that we can be your church that, that is filled with passion for you. And a, a, a church that has not forgotten our first love. Father, give us, give us a, a, a passion for you. That we will endure through, through times of suffering. Like the church of Smyrna. And God, where there is physical and emotional torment and, and sickness and disturbance. God, give us the, the power to first of all overcome it in our own body and then to be used by you to bring healing to our generation. God, where we are backslidden, heal us of our backs, the joy of our salvation. Heal our backsliding, God. And God, empower us to rebuke the demonic, lying prophets. The only way we can do that is by knowing the truth. And Father, get us off our butts. Fire us up to be evangelists for you. And to stop being lazy Christians with a lackadaisical attitude. Fire us up to not be apathetic to the issues of the world and of the state and of the city. Because God, you want to use us as lighthouses. Oh God, we thank you for that. Give us the strength to have patience, to wait to see the manifestation of our expectation and of your promise. God, never let us be lukewarm Christians. In Jesus, match this name we pray. Amen.